Um, I'm Tom Robb from Kyoto Sangyo. This is Matthew Claflin, who will also be presenting. And you can also ask questions to Amanda uh, Gillis Rutaka there and Sandy Healy, uh, who are also uh, involved in, in our program. And um, basically, what this is, it's a way to check whether students have done the reading that they're supposed to have done. And uh, it's a problem because ours is not a voluntary program, it's required. Um, and I can't even get this to show. Right, isn't this new system so nice? Uh, Slideshow. Slide show That's the one here. Okay. And here is um, where we are actually using this program this year. Uh, faculty foreign languages, all the first year and second year students that are both in the English department or the um, Kokusai Kong case, so about 400. Faculty, faculty of International Culture is actually using it for extensive listening. And general education, we have 1,660 students who are doing our oral communication course, which means twice a week, and 1,260 students doing the reading skills course, which also means twice a week. And there are about 600 students here actually are taking both of these. And so uh, they're getting a double dose of extensive reading. And there is a required number of books that they read, basically. Uh, technically, it's points, but essentially, one book equals one point. And for the uh, A Bagel students, uh, it's eight, eight books, right, in the spring term, and it's 12 in the fall term. And the second year, it's 12 and 12. And for the general education, this is the first year we've tried this. Um, it's just five books per term for the students, but if they're taking both, it's 10 books. And we did have, well, I'm jumping ahead of myself. Um, I won't worry about the purpose. I think we generally know what the purpose is. Um, that's just a quick shot of them taking the library. So due to time limitations, I'm going to talk fairly quickly. We had an old program for checking whether the students read called the Accelerated Reader Program. And we had quite a few problems with it. One problem is we couldn't use that anymore because we had more graded readers than we could make quizzes for the program. It only, it only allowed 100 so-called teacher-made quizzes and we had more titles than that. But uh, if you go through these, those are the opposite. So I'll just go through what our Moodle Reader module does. Students can only select books from their, uh, at their current, from books at their current reading level or one below it or actually one above it. Uh, is also possible now. Students are promoted to the next level after getting eight points at their current level, and this can vary as well. But basically, if they read eight books at that level, generally that's enough, so we push them up to the next level of books. Books are basically all worth one point, but some are worth more or less purely based on the relative length compared to the graded readers at that level. So they can choose anything that level, and they aren't looking for the th thickest book or, or whatever. With the old system, they tried to find the ones with the highest point value because they can get their points faster, but these are all one point. Students may take their tests anywhere, even at home. And in fact, I'll show you some data later, the most popular time to take tests is 11 p.m. at night. Um, <laughs> quizzes are randomly generated from a large question bank. There are several question types. So there's at least 20, sometimes 30 or more questions for each one, and each student is getting only 10 of them. So that uh, prevents cheating, uh, because uh, they are going to be different each time. Um, different question types, I'll go over that in a minute, different slide. Quizzes are time, maximum 15 minutes. In fact, most students take only three or four minutes to take the quizzes. And in order to prevent a last minute rush, students may take a quiz only every third day. That's adjustable. We're thinking maybe every two days might be uh, better now. But right now it's set it every three days. And this is what the screen looks like. Um, I'll show you this live as well. They get a, a stamp collection of the titles for every single book that they pass. And then here is a, a record of all the books, including the ones they haven't passed and their current. Uh, cumulative total. It says here your current level is three. You must take three more quizzes at this level um, and one, two, three, four, five, so eight. You can't read any more books at level two because um, the student has read the limit of level two books. And you can take a quiz now, which means it's been three days since the last time the student took a quiz. And this is the bottom of the same screen actually. Um, they pulled down this tab to choose the publisher of the book 
And then here they see only the quizzes that it are possible for them to take quizzes on. If they're a different level, they won't show. And here are the question types. True, false, multiple choice. Over there, matching questions. Who said this? Who said this to who sometimes? And then the ordering one is new. We developed it for this program. And there'll be, say, 15 or 20 events in the story. And each student will get a subset of perhaps six, eight, or 10 of them, which they have to drag into the correct order. So this is a bit problematic in that it works fine for books that have a storyline. But like the Cengage uh, Foundation series, where they're all uh, factual, you can't do anything with uh, this type of question. And this is rather old data. This is last year in the uh, spring term showing the old accelerated reader system and the problems we had with it. You can see here the rush right at the deadlines. So there's a midterm deadline for reading half of the books and then a final term deadline. And you can see with the new program, it spread very evenly. And also, you can see right at the, the peak there, the red is the number of students who have failed the quizzes. Mm -hmm. And we have a much lower failure rate. All right, it's <laughs> about, they pass about nine books out of 10. And I have a graph for that later. Um, here are the access times. And this is 1 a.m. And here is the peak at 11 p.m. And you can see students are not morning people. Uh, <laughs> this is the pass rate for the oral communication. Th these are the students that are in the general education program for oral English, and they have only uh, to take five. And you can see this is, hasn't reached 90%. Um, a lot of these students really don't want to be doing this, right? It, this program is actually forced. It's required. Um, I don't have anything on here about the evaluation, so I'll mention that now. Um, they have to read the five books. If they don't, they lose one point off their final grade for every book they haven't read. If they read more, they gain one point for every book they read above five. And right now, we don't even have an upper limit to set. So there is one student who has read 15 books now. So she'll get 10 extra points added on to her grade. This here is the actual number of quizzes taken for the ABEG uh, first year, the English first year uh, students, by um, the level that they are currently at. Um, this year, um, I couldn't get the number two in there. Uh, in fact, if I did, you wouldn't be able to read it, so I put it up here. And you'll notice also that there's um, one label called cheated. Um, this um, data is extracted semi-automatically from the data. If we see, for example, that somebody took the a quiz at home, which we can tell because every computer in the world has an IP address, and all the ones in my school start with the same six digits. If it's something else, it means they actually took it at home. Well, it could have been an internet cafe or something. Um, if you see that the same quiz was taken back to back by two students at a home address, that is highly suspicious. Um, and so we just mark it as cheated. And if the student comes to complain, but no, really, we did take them uh, individually without helping, whatever, we say okay and we give them the pass. But so far, no one has challenged us on that. No, one student did the other day. He said that he and his girlfriend uh, did them hotel in the second year. And, um, we just said, okay, and we gave them the points. So it's not a problem. But the re this is actually to prevent further cheating, because not only do they get marked as cheated, but the, the person who helped also loses the point. And so this has, there's peer pressure there. You know, If you ask somebody to take the quiz for you, that person could stand losing his own grade. This is the same data, uh, but based on 100% to show how many have passed. Uh, you can see this is in the 90% range, 93 for those that are at level six. And uh, it's hard to see a little bit at the top, and so I created another chart that just goes from 80% to 100%. And I'm not quite sure why it is that people in the middle level are the ones more prone to cheat, but um, there you are. The orange here, these actually are students who have failed, but they failed within 10 points. 
uh, which means they actually did make an effort, probably. If you look at, I don't have a slide for this, if you look at the data for the students in the general English education, especially at the lower levels, we have them divided into five levels, the lower two levels, there are quite a few students who just try to take the quiz, see, uh, the quiz to see if they can pass without reading the book. And so their scores are abysmal, you know, zero, five percent, ten percent, or whatever. So that's why I, I uh, generated that. And this is data based on last year, um, that chart I showed you comparing accelerated reader to the um, Moodle reader module. Um, they've read more books, 4.7 per student with the accelerated reader versus 8.3 uh, the following year with the reader module. And you saw there was a more even distribution of the grades and uh, there are fewer quiz failures uh, this year than, uh, well, when we were using accelerated reader which has now been phased out. Um, I don't want to go too much into how you could use it, but basically there are two ways that you could actually implement this in your own school. One is you have your own Moodle server. The code is available for, uh, for free at moodlereader.org. Um, and the other way is if you can't uh, get it yourself, you don't have your own Moodle server, um, you can actually get a course on moodlereader.org and have your students take them there. Kinky, uh, this university actually is doing that this year. They have a course on the moodlereader.org server. Um, and I don't have to go into the setting up. Uh, this information is available on moodlereader.org if you're really interested in how to uh, set it up so that it works.